Hi and welcome to the second episode about this little Czech tankette or light tank as it was called in Sweden. In this episode we will cover a lot of details on the outside and on the inside and there is a lot to tell about them. Under this hatch you have access to the steering of this tank and it's a differential in the middle with two brakes on each side so you can do normal turns and you can also lock each side of the tracks to do more uh, narrow turns. In the turret there are two 8 mm machine guns air cooled and you can turn them sideways a bit so you don't have to crank the turret always but you can also turn the turret of course so it's possible to move them sideways the sides of above the machine guns and on top of the turret hatch there is uh, a cupola where you put your head inside. In modern tank tanks today on the turret top there is often a rotating site with day and thermal site within it for the commander to, to have a better view of the surrounding area. In the 1930s when this tank was designed they had also rotating cupola on top of the tank and this is that rotating thing but without the thermal site so this is like a helmet you wear on top of the head and um, it's a bit scary to use it when you are traveling since you put your head inside this sort of helmet and then you can rotate it like a motorcycle helmet and I actually had exercises during the war when they had the infantry on the outside trying to make the tank to, to stop so they climbed up onto the tank and they grabbed onto this sort of helmet and twisted in order to break the neck of the commander. It's not a tank with a lot of space on the inside um, and I made a challenge and I actually managed to get Nick Moran to the chieftain to climb into the tank and um, well he was inside he could sit there but uh, he said it was a, a bit too tight so it's not very lot of space on the inside and I will show you that later under the engine covers at the rear you have the air flow from the left side going through the radiator and out on this side and if you lift these up under each side there's the petrol tanks and on this side you fill a hole for the main tank which is the bigger one and on the other side there's a smaller one as a reserve so you have two different tanks and there's a lever on the inside so you can choose which tank to use depending on if you run out of gas in one of them I really love this tank because of all the details. Everything is done down to details and you find new things everywhere. And here with the radiator on this side you also have the space where you put these two funnels. So you can use them for filling water or petrol oil and there are two places where to put them so they don't get lost. A wonderful detail. If you compare this 
little vehicle from 1936 to the later model with the same Czech design. There are many similarities from this one up to the bigger 38T, the famous light tank used by the German army and also the Hetzer. Same type of running gear with same type of tracks, same types of road wheels, same design with the engine at the rear, the Praga Wilson gearbox in the middle and the same type of steering at the front. So there are many similarities from this one up to the bigger brothers that came later on. At the rear of this vehicle there is a round hatch and you can also find this same type of round hatch on the later models from the Czech designs, the 38T heads as the same. And why is there a hatch and what's behind it? Behind this area there's the cooling system with a radial fan standing like that, rotating like that inside there. So the cooling air from for the radiator comes in from the side, spins around and then out on that side. And the same idea on the other designs with the same type of radial fan on the inside and the same, basically the same design with the cooling system. So that's the round hatch at the back. Behind there is the, the cooling system. Well, the gunner commander's position and now we have removed the machine guns which should be in here just to give them a bit more space for you to see. Up here there's on each side there are vision ports that you can open up and look out or you can use your pistol through the holes. To traverse the turret you use this crank and here is the sight and uh, the gun mount for the machine guns. Machine gun ammunition down here and this triangular thing is the seat for the gunner commander and you have a crank up here to higher raise and lower the seat. And this is quite interesting because today in many modern armored fighting vehicles the seats are like this, They're hanging from the roof in order to protect the crew members from a mine blast from underneath the vehicle. So this was already invented during the 1930s and in fact they were really using them already in the First World War in the French FT-17 tanks. So the idea with hanging the commander or the crew member from the roof is nothing new. It's a hundred year old invention. But back then they didn't think about the mine blast from underneath. They had different aspects on why sitting in this cradle so here you sit and you then traverse the turret and you spin sitting in the same direction. So it uh, was a, an easy way to have the gun commander to be in the same position depending on how the turret was rotated. And uh, to the left front you have the antenna and there's a crank on the inside so you can raise and lower the antenna from the inside which is not uh, something that's very normal on, on tanks from that, that days. The commander also has three buttons he can push. From the be beginning this tank didn't have any internal communication so these three buttons were for communicating with the driver and the driver has three different lamps on his side so depending on how the commander is pushing the buttons 
the lamps will light and give the order turn left, turn right, forward, reverse, etc. So they used that kind of communication system in the tank instead of just screaming or tapping on the head or the shoulder. So this is the driver's seat and to the left of the driver is the pre-selected Praga Wilson gearbox and the pre-select is here. So you select which gear you want to be in and then you use the clutch pedal to change gears. To the far left is the handbrake and next is the left steering stick. To the right you have the right steering stick and the three pedals down there with the gear changing pedal to the left. Accelerator in the middle which is a bit strange if you're not used to it and brake pedal to the right. And the driver can look out through this little hatch or he can close and use the vision blocks, the glasses, which gives a bit more protection under enemy fire. And this is the lever for changing from the left to the right side tanks, the petrol tanks. So you can switch off one of them and use only the other one or use both. Let's take a closer look at the two machine guns mounted in the turret and because it's quite cramped in there I have removed them so they are now on the outside and we will put them back again and you will see how it looks on the inside. Two machine guns and this is the Kulspruta Model 36 Stridsvagn. It's a machine gun, same design as the Browning M1917, M1919. Basically the same design and they were used in different variants in the Swedish Army. Model 36 with air-cooled version, also water-cooled and it came later, the Model 39 with air-cooled and that Model 39 that was used in the Centurion tanks and also in the CV-90. So after 100 years, still in use. And the principle is the same as the famous Browning Caliber 50, which came during the 1920s and still today, 100 years later, still in use and used all over the world. many similarities and in the tank you have this with the belt fed ammunition coming from the left and since it's two machine guns they made it very simple or if you can complicate it make it complicated so they did this is a left fed machine gun and this one is the right fed machine gun. So they look the same but the parts cannot be interchanged. So these parts doesn't fit in this one and vice versa. And the ammunition used were from the beginning 6.5 millimeter or 8 millimeter. Later during the 1960s, 70s it was upgraded to the NATO standard 7.62. web belt and they came in boxes with 250 in each box so you could fire 250 rounds in a row if you wanted to but since it's air cooled the barrel gets very hot and you have to change the barrel from time to time Otherwise it will get too hot and it will get damaged. So after firing one or two boxes, depending on, on the heat, you need to change the barrel. So to change the barrel, you need to remove the ammunition 
and check that it's nothing inside. And then you take it apart and take out. This is the barrel and you change that and this is almost red hot when you remove it so you have to be very careful. Put it to the side and then another one back in again. The mechanism on its place and then so in order to feed the belts you need these two and the boxes with the ammunition and the 250 rounds they are in this box and instead of having these boxes out to the sides which is also a possibility in, if you don't have it in the tank this is another way because it's cramped on the inside so you need to have this little device to twist the belt down into into the machine gun so you have 250 rounds like that and when you are firing the empty shells comes out underneath two mounted side by side in the tank and let's now see how cramped it is on the inside as you can see it's not much space on the inside with the two machine guns the two ammo boxes but it's spring balanced and uh, there are two direct optics above the machine guns you can use or the one in the middle and you can fire left or right or both at the same time depends on what, how you want to do it and then change the ammunition boxes there is storage area in front of the gunner commander so he can change the boxes and then you have to reload with the ammunition belt down to the each each machine gun let's try to see if it's even possible to change the barrel on the inside of this very roomy tank need to have the turret in a very special angle it might be possible to do it but i will not i will not try that in a centurion tank it's a lot easier to do this but in this one it might not even be possible so whoever the designer for this tank was Mm. This was not so clever. And then reload again, ready for action a couple of minutes later. So if I could do 30 seconds barrel change in a Centurion, here it will take couple of minutes. A cramped but interesting design.
And you can take one of the machine guns, mount it on the outside as an anti-aircraft machine gun. But you have to tell the aircraft, the enemy, wait a second, because it's not so easy to get a machine gun from in there to this position. So um, you don't need to be in a hurry to do it. But it's possible to do it. So that was the outside and the inside of this little tankette. And I hope you enjoyed it. The next episode, we will take you for a ride in the vehicle. So stay tuned. <laughs>